Hi, this is Rosalind Eve, and we're going to have some fun with composition today. And I mean, not all 40 ingredients, but the ones that are affecting this one is what we're going to play with. Okay, so notice that when we look at the original, and this is the original image, okay, as is, and then all these are things that I've changed in there. So we're going to play with that and, and see the effect and the importance of the effect of where the placement of the main areas of interest are. Okay, so in this one we've got uh, mostly light area. Oops, <laughs> put that back here. Uh, this is mostly there that shouldn't be a problem now um, mostly light and medium light so when the majority of the space is taken up with light and medium light then you're going to tend to want to notice the dark more whatever the smallest part becomes the more precious more interesting exciting right <laughs> so in this case it's the dark space and of course, uh, vice versa, well, then if it was all dark, then we want to look at the tiny bit of light space, right? Okay, so in this case, it's the dark, and you can see there's the hair, this, this. There's a little bit of pure dark up here, too, on this medium dark. But you tend to not notice it because it's kind of blending in there. So here's where you're looking. Now, notice that in the total space we have to look if this is all we're mostly looking at which we are you're going to occasionally notice a few of the other details and stuff but you're going to keep being drawn back this is a very tiny amount of space for your path or flow of where your eye wants to go so when we look at this one and we compare i put my dog in there and this not only has increased the dark, the total dark, you know, if you add it all together and you lumped it all together in one big lump, you know, how big would it be, right? It's still kind of small to be a really good, strong main area of interest. Uh, this is kind of dominating now this area because this is smaller, right? And so you are also notice the triangle. Do you guys notice this, eh? See how the triangle goes from here to here to here. Okay, so it is kind of top heavy, just like this is top heavy and goes up into the corner. This is still top heavy, even though it's opened up and widened out where you want to look in the image. Okay, so let's just move this one over more here so we can look at the next one. And you can see the only difference was I increased the dark mass some more. The dog has only one paw showing here and has the whole one here. So you're still looking in that triangular view. So let's go to the next one and see what difference is. Ah, okay, so now we've gone from three areas you want to look. We've gone to four because now we want to look here, 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 and here, right? So do you notice that it starts looking messy when you tend to get a whole lot of little bits of things to look at rather than more strong masses of things? And this one, the, the difference here is, watch, there we go. Was that cool? <laughs> it just manifested, right? <laughs> so we've got this fan here now. And we've got this here bow has been lengthened to, again, create more of a strong area of interest. And the lines is another ingredient that we've added in, just like texture and shape and size and, you know, all those, like I said, 40 ingredients. Um, exaggeration, mood, you know. Tons of things, right? Okay, so we've added another ingredient of lines, but we still have a bigger total dark mass. So this is making this more of a stronger area of interest because here we're kind of competing. Where do you want to look? The, all the dark spaces are pretty close to the same size. Right here now you can see that this sort of becomes like one area. And just like the hair tends to look like one area because it's so close or connected. 
So now where do you want to look? Now you've now you've determined by adding this dark space. So if you're an artist, keep this in mind that you're controlling where people are looking in the image and what they're finding the most interesting, right? And this has opened up your viewing window to a larger viewing window. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Now, notice that we've got a, a diamond shape here. And what do we have here? We have a triangular shape here. You see? And notice that this is not as messy as this. And in this one, look what happens when I move the dog up. Now, why does it make a difference where they're placed? Well, if you're familiar with the rule of thirds, then this would be like nine equal portions if you drew four lines. So you cut it in, you put one in, one third in, you draw a line. And one third down from the top, you draw a line. One third in from the left side, you draw a line. One third up from the bottom, you draw a line. Okay, so you got it, right? Tic-tac-toe. <laughs> no. Um, anything placed on where the lines cross, the third lines cross there, makes it more of an area of interest. That's why you'll tend to want to look at her face too, is because it's on the third line cross point. But because it's not black, it's not going to be, shall we say, the most interesting area of interest. So yes, you can determine where is the number one main area of interest, number two, number three, like like that, and where the minor, little minor, extra detail type areas of interest are. So these are the three main ones. This is the four main ones. Okay, so let's look at the next one. Oh, just to finish that off, look at what happens when... I grab the dog and move it up towards the cross point more. You see how it becomes a much stronger area of interest. Now you put it back down. You see how it lessens the area of interest? Okay, let's step back and step back. Okay, so that was just a little point I wanted to make as well. Yes, you're going to be experts on this, right? <laughs> okay, so notice here, this is... Okay, got the wrong one there. Okay, so notice how that is increasing that it's now competing with the dog for your attention. So it's becoming more of a prime area of interest because of the mass, because of the lines, and because it's on the third line, so it's like making that one more powerful as a, a main area of interest, giving it strength, you see? Okay, so those are the main points that I wanted to make. Now we can have a little bit of fun because this is the sergeant, see written up here, sergeant version all. <laughs> In other words, everything is on this one. As soon as they go like this, you can see now you've got one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so you can see that it starts to get messy the more uh, large areas of interest that you get within an image, and it starts to lose... Um, I'm trying to think of the word that I usually use. It's so perfect. But it's like impact. It's losing its impact. It's That's the word. Neutralizing its strength as a main area of interest, that's what's happening because you're getting too many that are close to the same size and and you're getting um, too many things to look at. So it tends to get to look more messy and confusing like this, this, this. If this was a bit bigger area, it would be more ideal. And if this was a, a little bit bigger, so then you then you know you're supposed to look here because it's bigger. Then you know you're supposed to look here because it's the second. And then you notice this is the third. So that's why we're doing it like that. Okay. So now let's have some fun here by going like this. 
Okay, so we're taking it back to the original. So there's the original, and we're putting in the dog there. Okay, so notice now that it's all in one image, it'll happen faster, and you'll be able to see the difference. In the mass, see how the dog is smaller there? And then here. And then what happens when we start putting all of these in? You see, we start moving them around and stuff. Okay, so let's say we just do those two. Or let's see, we take out one of those and we do this one. Or we do the smaller one. See how it changes who you're seeing as the dominant because of the size there? See what I mean? The size is making a difference, right? Okay, so now that we've totally confused everybody with all these things. So yes, ultimately, that is how it works. So I hope that you found this to be fun, and I know I did. And this is me, if you're trying to find me. And this is my Facebook page. Practical Art Analysis, of course, is the end part here. And the same with my email, because I'm a Practical Art Analyst. It's practicalartanalysis at gmail.com is my email in case you would like to have your own private um, one done, an analysis of one of your images or a group of your images. I do have a price page there as well. But please enjoy all the videos there, all the practical art analysis videos. I do have little tutorials and things too, and I hope that you guys will enjoy that as well. Okay, well, hit that subscribe, and I guess we'll look forward to seeing you guys next time. Okay, thank you. Bye for now.